Thinking aloud. Conversations on the leading edge of knowledge and discovery with psychologist Jeffrey Mishlove. And one day somebody uh, said to me, well, uh, let's say you're right. Let's say there's all this information processing. How would that explain consciousness? How would that explain love, joy, emotion, envy, feelings, pain, blueness, what philosophers came to call qualia? And this became known as the hard problem. Subjective experience as opposed to computation. They're not necessarily the same. The uh, artificial intelligence folks have always assumed that when you get to this level of computational complexity, a critical level, that consciousness would emerge mm -hmm. magically, it seems, out of computational complexity. And uh, this guy was turning that around and saying the same thing to me that how would that explain consciousness? And mm -hmm. It kind of stunned me for a second, uh, for more, more than a second. I, was, uh, I realized I was, I'd become a reductionist and really didn't have an answer. How would that explain consciousness? Well, fortunately, that person uh, recommended that I read a book by Sir Roger Penrose called The Emperor's New Mind. And uh, the emperor was probably meant to be Marvin Minsky, uh, uh, who was the scion of AI at that time. But the point was that, that AI was really bluffing, that they really didn't have anything to relate to mm -hmm. consciousness. Well, and we need to make a careful distinction between intelligence and consciousness, don't we? Absolutely. And there are machines now, our laptop is, my laptop is more intelligent than me in a lot of ways, mm -hmm. and computers can uh, beat uh, the best chess players in the world in chess, but as Roger pointed out, they don't understand anything. Mm -hmm. Using Gödel's theorem, a philosophical mathematical argument, he showed that that understanding is lacking in computation. Mm -hmm. Computation can do a lot of things, but it, there's no understanding. And John Searle had a similar argument called the Chinese room argument. If you put a, uh, somebody in a room and with a lookup table that this Chinese character means this, he can make this translation, and he could literally translate things into Chinese or out of Chinese, but without understanding mm -hmm. Chinese. So these types of arguments show that consciousness is more than computation. Mm -hmm. And in this book, uh, which kind of blew me away, it was fantastic, uh, uh, broad ranging over many, many areas with lots of really cool illustrations, hand-drawn illustrations by Roger, uh, he offered a solution to what was missing. If mm -hmm. it's not computation, what is it? He claimed that there was some other ingredient, that there was something non-computable in understanding or as well as in feeling and conscious awareness and, uh, and emotion and so forth, something that came, and this was the real mind-blowing thing, something that came from quantum physics, mm -hmm. a particular type of collapse of the wave function. And uh, he related it to the structure of the universe. So back in the early 90s when I read this, I was, I was quite literally blown away. Let, now let's step back for just a moment and talk about who Sir Roger Penrose is. He, he really made a, a reputation for himself with his theorizing about the nature of black holes. He and Stephen Hawking really developed the theory of black holes and uh, the Big Bang and general relativity and mathematics and, and a lot of uh, quantum physics and geometry. At, at, his, at his heart, Roger is a mathematical physicist interested in geometry, in mm -hmm. form. Mm -hmm. And he's particularly interested in platonic forms. Mm -hmm. You know, Plato said that the law of the good, that the geometric forms really represent information and represent uh, everything. Mm -hmm. And Roger thought that these forms were actually intrinsic to the universe, built into the fine scale structure of reality. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that came out of his book, but he also related it to a problem called collapse of the wave function, or the measurement problem. But now let me just slow down a minute and okay. unpack what you just <laughs> said, because it's quite profound. In other words, Roger Penrose was a Platonist. Among other things, yes. yes. A Platonist uh, as opposed to a reductionist. Correct. A, a Platonist who believes that embedded in the very essence of the universe are uh, platonic forms, including mathematical ideas, and also including aesthetic and ethical ideas, uh, so that one might say that th th these elements of consciousness are not separate from the universe, but part of its very essence. 
That is correct. That, and I think of it now as kind of a resonance, so that when we have a conscious thought and are mindful about it and make a decision that maybe feels right, it's because we're, we're in resonance with the structure of the universe at a deeper level. Mm -hmm.